Fifteen hundred from Monaco. As we get this race underway, we should also mention the American in the field, Craig Ingalls, national yeah. champion last year. He's quickly becoming a name to reckon with in the 1500, and he's extremely fast over the last 1500 meters. And here we look at, uh, well, am I going to go with the Pacers or am I not going to go with the Pacers? And the only one to do it right now is Chariot. Everyone else Chari insanely comfortable with their own pace. <laughs> yeah, Chariot loves to go hard. You know what, last year was a big year for him. He kind of realized, you know, I'm the best guy in the field. I'm not going to leave it up to maybe uh, someone coming and out kicking me. I'm going to take charge early. So this is a race he likes. The prescribed pace was 54.5 for the first 400. And I think you're going to be just slightly underneath that by almost two seconds. Wow. Yeah, that is blazing. Let's see if he can hold it. Those lights on the inside rail denote where the pace should be. Jakob Ingebrigtsen now sort of like the de facto pace setter for that second group that includes all the other favorites. Right now it's the two pace setters and the world champion well in front. You know, Chariot, he is the best right now. He likes to run this way. I think he can hold it. Although the pack looks, it looks like they're slowing a little bit. Maybe the pack is coming back to them now. Um, that is, however, I believe it would have been world record pace. So that's very, very fast. Well, as you mentioned, Amy, very astutely on that last 100 meters, the field is coming back to the leaders. They were prescribed to go through 800 in 150. They were two seconds fast and now a second and a half slow. You can see the Ingebrigtsen's working together to get back up on the pack. They are also strength runners. They like fast pace. They're running very smart right now, and pretty soon they're going to be closing in on Chariot. Behind the Ingebrigtsen brothers is Jake Whiteman of the UK. And then a few meters back, you see the American Craig Ingalls losing a little bit of ground. He's two spots ahead of Yomif Kajelcha, who looks like he's going to try to make a move to bridge that gap. As Keeter will step aside, Chariot now to the lead as they'll wind up for the final lap of this very fast so far, 1,500 meters. Chariot's still in the lead, but the Ingebrigtsen's looking very good. They ran a tactical race, a smart race, and it is going to be a tough close here. So the reigning world champion on the back stretch for the final time, trying to hold off the teenage phenom, the 19-year-old Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Jakob is young, but you can't tell him that. He is willing to take on anyone. Could he pull off the victory here in Monaco? And look at the gear that Jake Whiteman has found as he's moved into third. The fifth place finisher last year in Doha is looking to close with these guys so that he can mark himself as a medal contender. Off the final turn into the final stretch. Jakob now trying to go to the outside. A lot of looking around by the leader, but Chariot's going to look ahead and see the finish line and the victory here in a very swift world leading time of 3.28.45. That is incredible. That is close to his PR, which he set in Monaco here two years ago. Jakob Ingebrigtsen was right on his heels. It has to be a PR for him as well. Just phenomenal racing. Yeah, look at the turn for home. It's a four-person race. And as you watch this final 100, you kind of put the remaining performances in perspective. You said Chariot very close to his PR, just four hundreds of a second off his lifetime best and one of the best performances at this distance in history and Jakob now with a new lifetime best and a new European record 328 68 and uh, got to feel bad for Jake Whiteman who's now number probably number two on that list I'd have to officially confirm that but a big PR for him as three men under 330 in this men's 1500. A lot of times, a lot of personal bests, but the champion in Monaco is the world champion, Chariot.